prophets, the prophets. That's still at work. And you are all the way through this, this period of mankind from 6,000 years ago until today. We have been in a war. And it's not flesh and blood. The whole world needs to get the reality of a spiritual war taking place every day and has been from the beginning. And it's just like our scripture today, which, you know, that often happens when I give a message. <laughs> one of these deacons or deacon has got one of my scriptures. But the Apostle Paul wanted to make it clear to the church that we are not wrestling against flesh and blood. We're wasting our time there. Matter of fact, we're developing enemies, and which we probably would anyway. But we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against him against our enemy. <clears throat> and so, in this age in which we're living, the last days, you know, I remember uh, 2008 it was, I believe. We, we had two services a day because it was just so full of people. Until the pastor <laughs> spoke a truth that they didn't want to hear. <laughs> which is, you know... Uh, it was, it was, for me, it was, um, I really felt bad because I thought I'd made a mistake. And I went home, and I fell on my face before our God. He really loves me, <clears throat> loves us, and I really love him. I don't want to disappoint him ever. I don't want to disappoint him. And so I went home and I prayed. And I said, I was sorry if I made a mistake. And here's what he said. He said, my people think that they can separate their Christian lives from their political and social lives. lives. Like you can set your Christianity over here and take up your politics and social life over here. And, and the problem with that is that we have Christians who are trying to live in both worlds, you know, and I think it's over in Revelation where it says they're lukewarm. And, and so <clears throat> God straightened that out. And then we began to see this falling away in the churches all over, you all. First Timothy 4.1, for uh, the Spirit of God speaks expressly that in the latter days some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Second Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, that there will be a falling away in the latter days, and that is happening. What are we doing? We're praying. God is not willing that any perish. We, we, have to, we have to really get a good understanding of the depths of God's love. I mean, God loves the worst of the worst, and he wants to see them saved. And so that's what we do. We pray for their salvation because somebody prayed for ours. We were lost, amen? And we got saved. <clears throat> but in these, <clears throat> these latter days, you all, uh, and, and we're there, we have to learn to, to put our emphasis on God's word, on God's spirit. He is living in us. He is in us. 
We are born from above. The Spirit, and, and I love this over in John 14 and verse 23, where Jesus says, if you love me, you will obey me, and we will come and abide within you. In other words, the the Godhead would dwell, is dwelling in us. The Father and Son and Holy Spirit at this very moment, if we have received the Lord as our Savior, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are within us. I'm telling you. And it's amazing how long it takes to realize he's really there. <laughs> the Lord is really there. And, and we have to yield ourselves to him completely because he has a calling for every life in here, every one of us, a plan for every one of us, you all. Psalm 139, there's a book written for all of us. God has a plan for all of us. And, and we have to totally yield ourselves. And we need to learn how to rebuke the enemy. Amen. When you hear a negative thought going through your mind, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You're talking about somebody getting away as fast as they can. The enemy takes off. It's that name, Jesus. They can't handle it. <clears throat> and so getting back to this. God has revealed secrets to us in these last days. And we have heard from his prophets, and <clears throat> are there false prophets? Yes. But we have <clears throat> true prophets, and God has shown us who they are. And, and uh, it helps to know what the Lord is doing so that we can join him in doing it. And if everything seems adverse to what has been prophesied, we're not going to let adversity change our thinking. We're going to maintain our faith in God. Amen. Amen. And, and so <clears throat> today's message is, is kind of like a repeat, 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 because things like this throughout Scripture have happened all the time. And... It's entitled Responding to the Prophets of God because even in the days, Old Testament days, there were those individuals who had trouble with believing prophets. And then there were those who did know they were prophets and they sought to kill them. Some of them just died for being the God-like prophet that they were. But, in, but this one, I think, kind of reflects on, on the day in which we are living. We're going to use for a text. <clears throat> we're going to use for a text, 2 Kings and chapter 7, and we're going to uh, use the amplified version. This is Elisha. <clears throat> He is uh, the prophet right after Elijah. Elijah went through some very difficult times, as we all recall. He took out all of those, um, those false prophets or whatever you want to call them, a bail. Uh, they were all killed, all 800 of them, and including... Uh, uh, what's her name? Jezebel. Thank you. Jezebel. And he left there running and went and hid in a cave. Things were so bad in Israel at that time that <clears throat> Elijah thought that he was the only man of God in Israel. And God had to tell him, no, I have 7,000, a remnant that's still here. Hallelujah. And, and so 
he wasn't really comforted by that. <laughs> you know, he's ready to go home. And, and of course, God did. But <clears throat> it's always been tough because just as the prophet uh, professes what God gives him, the enemy does the same. And whatever the enemy does is always contrary to God. Satan takes up people, and people take him in, unfortunately. You will have a large number of people, oh, there's no devil, there's no God. Oh, yes, there is. Yes, indeed. <clears throat> and they don't know that by them saying that, there's just a spirit there, a wicked spirit that has spoken a thought into their mind that there is no devil and there is no God, but there is. Amen. All right. <clears throat> Verses 1 to 2. Then Elisha said, <clears throat> he's talking to the royal officer of the king. He says, <clears throat> hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord. The prophet is speaking what God has given him to speak. Tomorrow, about this time, a measure of finely milled flour will sell for a shekel, <clears throat> excuse me, and two measures of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. Then, the royal officer on whose arm the king leaned answered the man of God and said, now here's, a, here's a, something that's common within the human race. The royal officer was the arm of the king, not God. Okay? That is not uncommon. <clears throat> the royal officer on whom the arm of the king leaned answered the man of God and said, if the Lord should make windows in heaven for the rain, could this thing take place? What he's doing, he is questioning what the prophet Elisha said in verse 1. I'm going to provide Israel with finely milled flour and measures of barley. This is what the prophet said. This is what God said through the prophet. But the royal officer is questioning it, and it's going to cost him his life. Anyhow, we'll read on. You'll see that later. <clears throat> then, <clears throat> okay, back to verse 2. Then the royal officer on, whom, on whose arm the king leaned answered the man of God and said, If the Lord should make windows in heaven for the rain, could this thing take place? that you just spoke, Elisha. And Elisha said, Behold, you will see it with your own eyes, but because you doubt, you will not eat of it. And, and he didn't tell him that he was going to die, but he knew that because of his unbelief, it was going to cost him his life. You'll see later on. And so <clears throat> what we want to do in this day in which we're living we need to stand on the word of the prophet and not well-oiled royal officers that presidents or uh, uh, all of these other political people, we need them, but we stand on God's word. All right? <clears throat> all right, so moving on, we're going to find... <clears throat> that the lepers had the boldness to take a stand in front of their enemy. They had the boldness to take a stand. They are a type and shadow of just the regular guy. You know, yeah, he had leprosy, but he was thought of as least among humanity. Amen. And there are others who may think the same of us, but they put their faith in God. Kind of like, okay, yes. All right. Now, four men who were lepers at the entrance of the city's gate, and they said, one <clears throat> said to one another, why should we sit here until we die? 
If we say <clears throat> we will enter the city, then the famine is in the city and we'll die there. And if we sit still here, we'll also die. So now come, let us go over to the camp of the Arameans, the Syrians. If they <clears throat> let us live, we will live, and if they kill us, we will only die. So they got up at twilight to go to the Aramean camp, but when they came to the edge of the camp, there was no one there. There was no one there. The Arameans, Arameans should have been there, but there was no one there. Was, let's see what happened. For the Lord had caused the Aramean army <clears throat> to hear the sounds of chariots and the sound of horses, the sound of a great army, they had said to one another, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come and fight against us. So the Arameans set out and they fled during the twilight and left their tents, horses, and donkeys, even left the camp just as it was and fled for their lives. You all, the enemy and the United States of America is going to be found doing the same. They think that they have power. They think that they are in control. But you just watch. They're going to be running. And, and this, will, <clears throat> this will be, uh, I think, you know, we know that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. And I'm sure it's happened in places, but it's for sure it's going to happen. Because they're going to leave everything behind. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. And y'all, we just have to stand in the midst of all of this uh, because it, it, is, it is very, very, very dark. <clears throat> all right. All right, let's see, verse 8. When these lepers came to the edge of the camp, they went into one tent and ate and drank and carried away from there silver and gold and clothing, went and hid them. Uh, then they went back and entered another tent and carried some valuable things from there also and went and hid them. Then they said one to another, we are not doing the right thing. This is a day of good news, yet we're keeping silent. If we wait until morning, light, some punishment, uh, for not reporting this now will come on us. So now <clears throat> let us go and tell the king's household. So they came and called to the gatekeepers of the city. They told them, we went to the camp of the Arameans, the Syrians, and behold, there was no one there, nor the sound, nor the sound of man there, only the horses and donkeys tied up and the tents had been left just as they were. Now this tells you there was a great amount of fear in the Syrian, in the Syrian army because they left their horses. I mean, they was in a hurry. Verse 11, then the gatekeepers, call, gatekeepers called out and it was reported to the king's household inside the city. Then the king got up in the night and said to his servants, I will tell you what the Arameans have done to us. They know that we are hungry, so they have left the camp to hide themselves in the open country, thinking when they come out of the city, we shall take them alive and get into the city. One, one of the servants replied, Please let some men take five of the horses which remain inside the city. Consider this. If they are caught, then at worst they will... They will be like all the people of Israel who are left in the city, even if they are killed. They will be like all the people of Israel who have already died from starvation. So let us send them and see what happens. So they took two chariots with horses, and the king sent them after the Aramean army, saying, go and see. So they didn't believe the prophet, and now they're not believing these, these four lepers who were actually there and probably had on gold rings and necklaces and fancy shoes and everything else. But they refused to believe 
they refused to not stand on their word, but on the word of the king and his uh, worker. Elijah's <clears throat> prophecy is fulfilled. So they went after them to the Jordan, and all of the road was entirely littered with clothing and equipment, which the Arameans had thrown away when they hurriedly fled. And the messengers returned and told the king, then the people of Israel went out and plundered the camp of the Arameans, so, <clears throat> so goods were so plentiful that a measure of fine, finely milled flour was sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in accordance with the word of the Lord as spoken through Elisha. Now the king had appointed the royal officer on whose arm he leaned to be in charge of the city gate, and the starving people trampled him at the gate. He was not prepared for it. He hadn't, didn't really believe it. And as a result, uh, they ran over him, and he lost his life, and he died just as the man of God had foretold when the king came down to him. It happened just <clears throat> as Elisha, the man of God, had spoken to the king, saying, okay, we've been there. All right. So what does that have to do with us today? I want to share with you couple, maybe even three prophecies. This is the first time I ever did something like this. To God be the glory. I'm going to share what the Lord gave me. He wants the church to know that the era of prophets has not ceased. I believe that in 2020, you allowed, God allowed a shift of darkness that this nation has never experienced. And, and I know that to be true for me. Uh, 2020 was a year of satanic activity and seems like no one would stand against it. It got ugly. There was people burning down cities, and, and this life matters more than another life. I mean, there was so much evil and wicked in this country. It was just nearly incredible, unbelievable. <clears throat> but that was a shift that took place, a shift of darkness that this nation has never experienced, but it was God's plan and you, uh, <clears throat> Father, has held us up and made us aware through your servants, the prophets. True prophets have been presented on a scale that we have never experienced. On November 27, 2021, there was another shift, a shift wherein God spoke through to his prophetess and prophets and here is what was said. This is the prophetess Marie Vasco. Vasco. I believe we are now at the beginning of the fulfillment of dreams we have long held dear to our hearts. Dreams that are united with God to release God's purpose in this hour. How many of you have a dream that has not been fulfilled? You've been waiting on it. Yeah. And waiting and waiting and waiting. Okay. Now is the hour. On November 27th at sundown, 
God is saying, get positioned and ready. He said, get positioned and ready for things to begin to shift for you. Okay? God is now releasing his angels to take us to a higher level, to open doors for us that only he can, that we may fulfill the destiny he has purposed for you and I, and that was set eternity past. God had already got a plan for Deacon Miller, Brandy, Lori, You too. (laughs) All of us who know the Lord. There's a plan, y'all. There's a plan. And, And to get ourselves ready for it is we just need to meditate. I mean, to meditate on the word day and night. Let it get a hold of us until... Our faith rises to the point where we get excited about what God is going to do in our lives. We have to meditate in it day and night. Here's another one. This one has to do with the state of Kansas. Veronica West gave this message. God gave her this message. I saw Kansas under an open heaven a place of supernatural encounter, divine translation, and angelic visitation. I saw a stairway appear over this land that connected heaven and earth. Angels were ascending and descending. This will be a birthing place, that is Kansas, of dreamers and visionaries. Kansas will be a place where heaven kisses earth, a place where supernatural suddenlies and divine shiftings take place, ushering in a new move of the Spirit of the Lord in the nations. We are going to have to listen to what Holy Spirit says and do it. None of it is left to us. It's Holy Spirit who's going to lead, guide, and direct us, which is what he's doing now, but we can just be even more specific. We can, we can just be totally yielded to Holy Spirit. Here is one more. I hope this works. It's not going to work. There was a message, a prophetic message given to Tim Sheets uh, back uh, about a week or so ago, and his brother Dutch Sheets spoke about it. And the thing that really stood out to me is that when the glory of God hits this earth, his very presence is going to manifest with his people. That's what's really exciting. We're talking about a major scale, and it's going to be necessary, y'all. Why? Because this darkness has not just covered uh, the United States. It's covered the world. It has covered the world. I think it was uh, our evangelist, Lori, who said there is a... um, a truth about 80% of leaders in the nations are devil worshipers. 80% all over the earth. But when God shows up, there's going to be a very strong shift and change. And we are preparing ourselves for it. It will not hurt at all to fast and pray and, and to acknowledge to the Lord, Lord, I know you have a plan for my life Lord, reveal it to me, and I will follow. Lead me, and I will follow. And he's going to use us in just tremendously magnificent ways, you all. We're going to see things like we've never seen before. And and these people, like this royal officer, uh, we thank God for those who stand for, and it'll be President Trump at the time, 
who stand for him, but number one is the Lord. Number one is the Lord. And, and that's how we need to prepare ourselves because God has sent us the message. He's on his way. We are in a new era. Here's something else that's going on to you all. Um, we need to know that we're going to have a very, very harsh winter. It's going to be a whole lot of snow. But as that snow falls, those who are wicked will fall as the snow represents cleansing. Okay? I don't know how strong that is, but this, this is a prophecy from our brother Hank Kuhneman and also from uh, uh, Rick, Rick. Yes, I, I always have trouble with him. Robin Bullock. Yeah. And, and uh, they are true prophets. Um, we know that God is going to take care of us. Yes. Amen. Amen. He'll take care of us, uh, and, but he's going to do it his way. Um, our intellect is not going to understand what he's saying. We simply by faith believe what he says. That's what we do, you all. As the children of God, believe. Things are going to get good. You know, I don't know how God is going to mix it all. All I know is that he's going to do it. He's got great things ahead for his children. And he's going to protect us and keep us, regardless of what happens. Here we go again with Psalm 91. They that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. Amen. Amen. And the church is going to grow tremendously. So you get ready because I think I'll just retire and go to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Praise God. Trust God no matter what. No matter how dark it is out, don't let it fool you. It is not greater than the light. Amen. So, Father, we thank you and praise you for who you are. Lord God, we just yield ourselves completely to your word, your ways, your prophecies. All throughout scripture, you have shown yourself to be faithful, that you have done exactly what you said. And we thank you, and we praise you, and we follow in the footsteps of these great men and women of generations past. We thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.